We are celebrating today the independence of our nation that in 1776, 56 people, including John Hancock with his big signature on the Declaration of Independence, and of course Benjamin Franklin and the others, declared our nation's independence from England. They took a big risk. We have a heritage, a great heritage, which we celebrate, of people, brave people, courageous people, who were willing to take risks. Because life is about taking risks. Because if you risk nothing, you will gain nothing. So we have to take risks. You have one life here. And God did not make you to be miserable. God wants you to enjoy life to be happy, to have the kingdom of heaven within you, to enjoy this life. He doesn't want you to be miserable and unhappy and joyless and depressed and anxious. But for that, you have to want it as well. It's not that, you know, the heaven's going to open and Boom, God's going to come and uh, he's going to take care of it all and you just can do nothing. You know, No, you got to do your own part. You have to stop being your own worst enemy. You got to put forward some effort to br bring about the change that you want to see in your own life. You have to be that change. The first reading today from the prophet Ezekiel. Ezekiel is sent and asked to take a risk. God sends him as God has sent you. And it's all a risk. Getting married is a risk, isn't it? Hello? I'm speaking. All you married couples. Mm? It's a big risk. Venturing out and dating is a risk. Mm? Starting a new job is a risk. Going to the AA meeting or Gamblers Anonymous meeting or Weight Watchers or starting a keto diet or joining the gym. It's all a risk. Huh? Going to the doctor because you are depressed and getting meds for your depression. It ain't going to be easy to make that first step. The first step is always the hardest. But as with Ezekiel, he did it because God asked him to do it. Ezekiel was able to do it. So can you. How was Ezekiel able to do it? The psalm tells us today how Ezekiel was able to do it and how you will be able to do it as well. Our eyes are fixed on the Lord, pleading, pleading for his mercy. You get it? Our eyes are fixed on the Lord. Ezekiel had his eyes fixed on the Lord. That's how he was able to do it. In the midst and in the middle of great adversity, Ezekiel did it, and you will be able to do it as well, because in like manner, God is with you. You are not alone. You can do it. Alone you can't. But the Bible makes it clear that I can do all things through Christ, who is in me and who strengthens me. Alone you won't be able to do it. If you enter any type of 12-step program, 
like Alcoholics Anonymous. The first step is recognizing that you have a problem. Let's, let's do that right now, everybody. You got a problem, okay? You know what that is. Now, alone, you won't be able to get out of that problem. You need the help of a higher power, Jesus Christ. Huh? And with God, all will be fine. And yes, just as Paul did it, you too will be able to do it, even though in the second reading today, we hear that Paul had thorns in his side. I know what you're saying. Honey, did you hear? Okay. Okay. Right? Okay. You know, Paul had thorns in his side. You got thorns in your side. Uh, I'm not, the thorns, we, we, we've all got them, you know. Huh? Your husband, your wife, your mama. Yo, daddy, <laughs> you, you've got them. Your kids, your co-workers, all the people in our life. But what would our life be without them? I thank God every single day for all the sheep God sends me. Every single day. And I also thank him for all the goats. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of those. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Lots of goats. But if we, the Bible says if we thank God for the good, why should we also not thank him for the bad? Huh? For everything works out for the good in this life for those who love God. Paul was able to do it to fulfill his mission, even though he had a thorn in his side, which God allowed. Huh? So, you know, so, so often many of you are like, why is my husband doesn't change? Or my kids, why don't they? It's for, you know, there's a reason for that. For your own good, so you don't become too elated. For your humility, that's why you got the husband you got or the wife you got, or the kids you have, and accept them. A lot of times with sickness in our life. Hmm? There is a reason for it in our life. Disease. There was a purpose to the pandemic. What that purpose is, well, we're, we're going to figure it out. In God's time, every suffering, every problem, every thorn has a purpose in our life. Hmm? I don't hear from one ear. I usually try not to tell people which one it is because then they will want to go to confession to that ear. Okay? Uh, <laughs> but I was always... You know, like, why? Why is it that they gave me medicine when I was a baby, you know, under communism in Poland? Why? Why? And because I don't hear from one ear since I was a baby, half of my brain was developed in such a way, because, you know, our, our brains are divided, that the, the side of my brain that is creative and that that, that is responsible for learning languages and that is artistic is so much more developed. So I have so many other skills. God, what I saw as a thorn really is a blessing. You get it? And I could go on and on and tell you story after story after story. So you have to thank God for your thorns and take risks, as Ezekiel did and Paul did, in the midst of having thorns, with your eyes fixed on the Lord, always pleading for his mercy. Not with your eyes fixed on your issues and problems. Hmm? The 56 people 
who declared independence in 1776 took big risks because they saw what was going on in their life and they said, this is not working for us. We want something different. We don't like our life, they said. We don't want to be slaves to England. Huh? We want something else. We're not happy. They wanted something better for their family. What about you? You too. If things are not working in your life, in your family, in your job, in your person, you need to take a risk. Stop wanting God to make miracles for you without you doing something. Stop being lazy, in other words. You've got one life, one chance to make it the best life ever, and you're going to waste it being unhappy because I'm too afraid. Jesus says it over and over again. Be not afraid. I am with you. How many times in the Bible does the phrase, be not afraid, appear? 366 times. Now, you think God has a message? Why 366 times? Because God also wants to include the leap year. Like last year was a leap year. So it ain't just 365, but 366, 2020. A, a year full of fear was a leap year 366 times. God said for every day when you get up, the first thing you need to hear, be not afraid because if God is with me, who can be against me? In other words, let me translate this a little better. Because I see some confusion. I don't like you all being confused. Quit mud crawling. Hmm? You know what mud crawling is? When I was learning to swim, we had this lake in the town of Oviesno, not too far from where I grew up. I grew up in the, in the town of Lutomiesz. I'm sure you're going to remember these names after Mass. You know, uh, but there was a lake, and the lake had a beach, and it, wasn't, it didn't have sand. It was kind of like Clear Lake, very muddy and smelly, but that's, you know. <laughs> and I, we would go there to swim, and because I didn't know how to swim, I would just stay at the, very close to the shore, and there on the, at the shore, I would move my hands in the mud, and I'd, I'd go, look, Grandma, look, I'm swimming. I'm swimming. Well, I wasn't swimming. I was mud crawling. So that's the question for today. Are you swimming in this life, or are you mud crawling? Hmm? The first leap of faith. The first time you go out into the deep water is the hardest. But then once you start swimming, you will swim. Huh? So what do you want in this life? You want to crawl in mud? Or do you want to swim? Jesus wants you to swim but you prefer mud crawling because you limit yourself with your thinking. You're your own worst enemy. You tell yourself you can't. Stop it. Jesus goes back to his hometown of Nazareth today. But because of their lack of faith, that's why he says he was, am the, the, the Bible says today, he was amazed at their lack of faith. He's among his own townspeople. He's with his family. And he cannot work any miracles there. 
Why? Because they did not trust. Faith has nothing to do with belief. Even the devil is a believer. The devil believes, as is everybody here, you know, a great believer, because you're here today. And what do you want? Because you believe. You want a cookie because you believe, you know? What do you, what's that do for you in your life? Faith is about trust. It takes courage to trust. And when you have courage and you trust, you take a leap of faith. They didn't trust in Jesus. They knew Jesus, as you do, because you're here. But they didn't trust him. There was no trust in Nazareth. That's why there could be no miracles there. And if there's no trust in your life, there will be no miracle in your life. Get it. You should replay this homily over and over again. No trust equals no miracle. And if there is trust, there is risk. No trust equals no risk. Trust allows you to risk. So take the risk. Not trusting Christ is not trusting in his power to care for you and make sure all will be okay as you take the risk to better your life and the life of your family. Our eyes are fixed on the Lord, pleading, pleading for His mercy. Where are your eyes fixed on? Jesus' own family brought him down, didn't they? They put him down. They did not support him. People in the town, his neighbors, did not believe in him. They said what? He can't. Just the son of Mary, huh? the brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon. He's just a carpenter. He's nothing. He can't. He doesn't have what it takes to be a miracle worker. Jesus, he doesn't have what it takes to be a rabbi or a prophet. You've heard the same thing in your own life from all the people in your life who've said you're not good enough. They've called you stupid. They've called you not smart enough. They've, they've said you're dumb. You're ugly. You're not, you're not this or that. You're a failure. And you've believed it. Because you failed in diets before, and in relationships before, and in jobs before. Huh? I used to weigh 325 pounds. Do you know how many diets I was on? Huh? Like the cabbage soup diet, I don't recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> the good thing is, is I... Always slept alone. <laughs> you failed before in diets, in relationships, and in jobs. Huh? How many of you, you know, you're single and you're miserable and you don't want to venture out and date? But Father, I've been married four times. So what? Elizabeth Taylor was married eight times. <laughs> huh? Just because... You failed four times don't mean the fifth won't work out. You know, you've relapsed in alcohol or drugs or gambling or some other addiction, and you've believed the voices around you that say you're a failure. Just because you failed doesn't mean you're a failure. So are you going to believe these voices? Are you going to be like Jesus? Did he believe those voices in that town of Nazareth who said he can't, he's no good? That was his own family. Who's put you down the most? Huh? Your ex? Your ex? Hmm? Your ex? Hmm? Your ex? Hmm? You're going to replay what, the, what your ex said to you? You know, 
or your boss or all the jealous and envious people, your haters, your haters, you're going to believe them? Huh? Your haters, you all know that I'm from the south, right? Remember? <laughs> from the south of Poland. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you going to believe? And who are you going to trust? Whose voice are you going to listen to? Jesus says what? My sheep hear my voice. They know me. And they follow me. Which voice are you going to listen to in this life? The only voice that matters. The voice that Ezekiel trusted. The voice that Paul trusted. And the voice that who trusted? Look at him right, right here, Jesus, right? Which voice did he trust ultimately in the midst of his doubts, in the midst of all his haters, in the midst of being put on the cross, in the midst of his betrayal, in the midst of everything he went through? Which voice did he trust? The voice that we heard in the psalm today that says, Our eyes are fixed on the Lord. Pleading pleading for his mercy. He repeated that Psalm 123. And that's what you're going to do as you take your own leap of faith to better your life. Huh? Our eyes are fixed on the Lord. Pleading, pleading, for his mercy, our eyes are fixed on the Lord, pleading, pleading for his mercy. Let's stand and profess our faith together. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. And became men, for our sake. And let's pray for our needs today. We especially pray for our nation on this July 4th, for our families. We pray for our church. We pray for our church's leaders. That they may always lead us to listen to the voice of Jesus. Our shepherd, we pray to the Lord. Lord. And let us pray 
for our nation's leaders, our political leaders, that they may always be voices of unity, sowing hope and not division among us, we pray to the Lord. And we pray, especially on this July 4th, for all those throughout the centuries who have given their life, especially in our armed forces, for the freedoms we enjoy in the great United States of America, for their sacrifices, we pray to the Lord. Lord and we pray for all of our veterans, especially all those who have come back from the senseless and needless wars that have been fought in recent times in our country, all the veterans who suffer from PTSD and so many mental illnesses, all the veterans who are suicidal, who are homeless, that we may never forget about them, especially all those who've come back from Vietnam and Iraq and Afghanistan. We pray to the Lord. And we pray for ourselves and for our families. Pray for your children. Pray that you may be given that dose of trust to always take the leap of faith and to swim in this life and not mud crawl. We pray to the Lord. And we pray for all those who are sick, especially those who are depressed, those who suffer from any type of addictions in their life, all those in nursing homes and in hospitals, those who cannot go to Mass. We pray to the Lord. And we pray for all those who have passed away from our families and friends that we may always trust in the mercy of God. As we commend our souls to the care of our Blessed Mother always, we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> 